Oh, hello everyone. I know it's been a while since my last video blog, um, but something happened a couple weeks ago, actually on the 12th. Uh, I thought I really should blog about this, and um, uh, it was a really neat event. We, uh, I was part of the group of people that brought in Dr. Michael Ward uh, from Oxford to speak uh, here. He presented basically a presentation on his book, uh, Planet Narnia, and uh, I thought I'd do a video blog on it. It's very, um, well, basically, I guess the story starts off when I first heard about um, his book, anyway. Uh, it was 2008. Uh, I was living in Oxford at the time. I uh, did not meet him when I was there. But I heard about it, I thought... I was very skeptical. I thought, um, okay, so he thinks that uh, the planets correspond to each of the books of Narnia, that there's themes around each one. I thought, Okay, I, I don't really, I don't buy it, but I, I didn't completely dismiss it because it just wasn't fair because I hadn't, you know, heard his argument. Um, really, I, I thought, okay, um, I, I don't really, I, I was largely ignorant about it, so I thought, okay, well, I, I'm skeptical. I don't think it's, he's got a good case. It'll probably just die away. You know, it's a couple of years now, and it's really going strong. I mean, a lot of um, you know, people are endorsing this. Um, uh, N.T. Wright, you know, absolutely uh, loved it. Um, the uh, uh, it was it's there's been a lot of people who are really uh, latching onto this. I really only know of one uh, scholar who has said uh, no, and that's a uh, C.S. Lewis scholar uh, Brown, uh, Doctor. I don't even actually know his doctor. His name is Devin Brown, uh, but he uh, has criticized it a great deal. Um, Douglas Gresham originally criticized it, but uh, I think he's stopped now just because he hasn't read it. Um, but I still have not read the book. I've read, I've read parts of it, and it's fascinating. I think what I kind of I got the opportunity to spend uh, several hours actually with Dr. Ward. I got to have lunch with him. Uh, then I basically during lunch we talked a little bit about C.S. Lewis, about British education, about you know, just different things, and I said. Uh, okay, you know, I said respectfully. So what? You know, okay, so let's say you're, let's say Lewis did write um, each one of the books themed around one of the seven medieval planets. And uh, I thought, you know, so what? So what does that all, what does that give us? What what significance does it give us? And uh, he thought about it. He said, "That's a very good question. Could I could I discuss it with you later?" And so uh, he and I met up later that day, one on one. Uh, spent about an hour and a half together, uh, basically going over, um, you know, what, why would this be significant? Well, for one thing, it would show a great amount of detail that Lewis had put into the novels that would deserve to be acknowledged. But okay, okay. Um, then he started getting into the points that I thought really. I uh, thought, okay, this is significant. You know, one thing Devin Brown says, he says you know, all these things in the Chronicles you have. Father Time, Bacchus, you have um, uh, Father Christmas, you have unicorns in the same world with uh, you have werewolves being mentioned, and you have uh, river gods, and all these different things tying together. You Not every book takes place in Narnia. You have only one real unifying factor in each of the books, and that's Aslan, but he doesn't even appear the same way in each book. Um, you know, and he, and he, what he pointed out, he said, uh, and if some of you are, are into a lot of deconstructionist writing and music, get into the modern art, how people tear apart a coherent worldview uh, to say the world is chaotic, the world is jumbled. You know, a lot of you know, books and music and movies, they, they, they mimic what the author is saying about the world. Is the world coherent? Should it be coherent? And... You know, people like Devin Brown will say, "Well, it's intentionally this way. It's intentionally random, and it's a, he call you actually use the word hodgepodge." Um, I think before uh, Michael Ward used it as a in his rebuttal, basically, but Ward said, "If Lewis was saying, if it is this random, without the without the any order really, what is Lewis saying about the world?" If his stories are uh, have random events and characters, is the world a uh, world of random events and characters? I thought that's really interesting because that's something to consider. 
Now, the, he's pointed out the books don't feel random. And I would agree. I, I would, if someone had said, oh, the books are just you know random characters thrown together, I'd say, nah, no, but I couldn't really pin together what isn't, but what holds them together, what is cohesive. And his thesis uh, provides that. Also, I think what he gets into is how um, the, you know, the, since uh, we've broken away from any medieval cosmology, and he explains it in the book, um, goes into great detail. He's certainly done his research. He worked on it, like he said, for five years, he told me. But the world, you know, when we learned that the heaven, when we said, look, the heavens, you know, we talked about the, the stars, and when we saw that they were just this, uh, we saw that they were all this you know, burning gas and uh, chemical reactions and, you know, physical stars out there, we, we kind of lost any real beauty or meaning behind it. You know, we've separated it in this world of deconstructionism and fragmentation. We've, basically, what po the result of, this is uh, what kind of what brought around postmodernism, is we have destroyed any kind of meaning behind an element. You know, C.S. Lewis asks, or he says in, in Eusis tells uh, Koryakin, no, Romandu, tells Romandu, uh, when Romandu tells him about the stars, and he says, well, in our world, the star is a bowl of flaming gas, and Romandu says, even in your world, that's not what a star is, but only what it is made of. And you, know, you could apply it to humans. I mean, you could talk about what a human's made of. You wouldn't be talking about what a book, what a human is. You could talk about what a book is made of, but it won't be talking about what the book is, what the story is. And uh, I think that's what he's getting at here, is you know, how Lewis was trying to allude to how there's a lot of things in the world, and I think he brought in the imagery, partly for this reason, or Ward thinks he does, to bring about the deeper meaning behind these. And, you know, at first I thought, uh, when I first heard a little bit more about it, I thought, okay, this might be possible. It might be possible. I don't think it's likely. I don't think it's plausible. I um, don't think it's probable. Now, I'm, I haven't read it, um, but after talking with him, reading what I have of it, um, it's definitely possible. I think, actually, it's probable. Uh, the more I listen to this case, so... Um, you know, all the things he explains, why is Father Christmas in Lion, Woods, the Wardrobe? Why is there uh, a hunt for the white stag at the end? Uh, why does Lewis name Father, Father Time Saturn in the notes, in, in, in the margins, to, to, before he published the book? Because you know, we have the original manuscripts. Why did he uh, originally name him Saturn? It's, it's really interesting, all the things he brings out. And, and here's one of the biggest points is he's not comparing, oh, well, this is what Lewis wrote, and here's what medieval cosmology was. No, no, no. He's comparing what Lewis wrote in the Chronicles to what Lewis wrote about the planets. And I asked, he kind of said, well, why me? And he said, well, very few Lewis scholars go after Lewis's academic writings. And he said, that's what I've done. And I thought, that's interesting, because, yeah, a lot of people focus on his apologetics or his fiction. Um, but you know, it, it's interesting. You know, the one thing I think I'd answer... It occurred to me, because people say, well, Lewis didn't plan out all seven books. He says, look, I know Lewis didn't plan out all seven books. He first got the idea from a fawn, an image of a fawn carrying some parcels through, with a, an umbrella through a wood. Um, but I think some people say, well, just because Lewis didn't plan out all seven, therefore he couldn't have mat mapped it after all seven of the planets. But I'm thinking, why? Because he did write some books about the planets, the Space Trilogy. We know he wrote those uh, based around the planets. But... He didn't write about all the planets, and he obviously felt he didn't have to write books about all the planets, even though there were more planets to write about. So, I mean, why couldn't he have just started with one? You know, it, that was that was the one thing I thought I think kind of lingered in my mind the longest. Um, that eventually, you know, he and I talked about, and I realized that I don't think that holds. You know, uh, but anyway, I, I encourage you all to read it. Um, He's, I think he's back in Oxford right now after being in D.C. for a while. Um, it's a fascinating... He deserves to be listened to. Uh, I, have, you know, I think he's on to something. He points out so many things that Lewis wrote about the planets. It's a very interesting read. Uh, I'll probably give you my final analysis when I'm done. I, I think he deserves to be listened to. I think he's got a lot of interesting stuff here, and I want to see how he explores it. So I encourage you all to read uh, Planet Narnia. And if, he, if Dr. Ward is in your area, uh, go to hear him speak. Um, he's still doing book tours in the UK and in uh, across the US. So, until next time, uh, this is Brilliant signing off.